my first Kickstarter review. You know, the crowdfunded platform that allows just about anyone to pitch a product in hopes of getting the funds needed to deliver their promise. We've gotten a ton of games out of this website that otherwise wouldn't exist. Some good and some not so good, but hey, you can't blame the website for that. In today's case though, we're talking about Shantae, Half Genie Hero, WayForward's fourth installment in the Shantae series. It's a bit of an odd case where WayForward is known not only for releasing plenty of licensed games, but also that Shantae is an already existing IP and has been for around 15 years. Usually Kickstarter games feature brand new creations from developers who lost the right or privilege to work on existing franchises, but that's not the case here. Half Genie Heroes Kickstarter dates about three years ago, a span of time long enough that an additional Shantae game actually came out during Half Genie Heroes development. Go figure. I still remember the day that Kickstarter went up. WayForward prepared a trailer that, for whatever reason, changed Shantae to be white. Which was kinda weird, cause you know nobody wanted that. Everyone loved Shantae's design, and it was fixed shortly after, so I'm assuming it was just a mistake. Anyway, my experience with Shantae is minimal. In fact, the only other game I played before Half Genie Hero was Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, and I liked that game a lot, but despite knowing little of the series, I am aware that Pirate's Curse was a bit of a departure from the franchise, so let's see how Half Genie Hero changes it up. So we begin with Shantae being woken up by a mysterious voice she hears, and decides to go check it out. Upon confronting the voice, she is greeted by a messenger of the genies, warning Shantae of an agent of darkness who aims to reign supreme over not only the genie world, but human world as well, and that Shantae has the power to stop it. Come next morning, Shantae learns that her uncle Mimic is building a machine called the Dynamo, a device strong enough to not only power the city, but also keep everyone safe from attack. But before preparations can be started, the blueprints are stolen by Risky Boots, the mainstay antagonist of the series. With news of the town being attacked, Shantae sets out to stop her, and before you know it, the two duke it out, and the blueprints are retrieved back. Unfortunately for Shantae, she didn't do a good enough job, however, as the overall destruction leads to her removal as Town Guardian, which I believe happens in every game, so Shantae just can't catch a break. With the help of your friends, it's time to start building the dynamo, and Uncle Mimic is going to need a bunch of parts in order to get the machine up and running. It might sound like a fetch quest, and trust me, it is, but it's not uncommon that you'll be helping out others instead. Like when a young girl tells you that all the maidens from a village are disappearing, or when the entire town has amnesia, and you gotta find out how to fix it. The game plays out almost like an episodic TV show. You know, where each week tackles a new issue for our heroes to overcome, and there's just a little bit of continuity keeping you coming back, hoping that they reach their eventual goal. In Half Genie Heroes Defense though, the game is very lighthearted, and is often not taking itself too seriously. Every character is generally cracking jokes and trying to put a smile on your face, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't chuckle at some of the lines throughout the game. So yeah, the overall plot takes a backseat here, but there's plenty of character interaction to keep you going. Still, despite the harmless plot, I can't help but feel like some of it was rushed. My biggest criticism being Holly, the rival half genie who takes your place as Town Guardian. I say rival, but Holly doesn't really do much despite being introduced early on as someone to look out for. Minor spoilers here, but the game focuses on her for one level, and that's it. Never to be seen again, and as one of the only new characters to be introduced in Half Genie Hero, it's strange that they even bothered in the first place. I want to imagine that they had more planned out for this character, but for whatever reason couldn't go through with it. I mentioned earlier that I have limited experience with the series as a whole, but I think it's safe for me to say that Shantae has never looked better. While the pixel sprites of older games are great in their own right, the new HD sprites this game feature are fantastic. Each and every character model is just full of color and personality. The new art style in my opinion just fits the series perfectly, mixing those more provocative character designs with cute body proportions lends Half Genie Hero to look very much like a cartoon. You could just tell a lot of love went into making these sprites, and you know, despite never being a big fan of mixing 2D sprites with 3D backgrounds, Half Genie Hero does it pretty well. Not perfect, mind you, there is a bit of style clashing here and there, but the overall stylized modeling and shading went a long way to make the two styles blend nicely together. Also, and I hope I'm not sounding like a broken record here compared to all my other reviews so far, Half Genie Hero's soundtrack is great. Though in this case, I was expecting that. As a fan of WayForward's main composer, Jay Kaufman, I had no doubt in my mind that I'd be enjoying the music featured here. There's familiar tunes remix and new soundtracks filling up the library, and it's really damn catchy. Most of it sounding very upbeat, fitting right in tone with the game. Much like its predecessor, Half Genie Hero is a 2D platformer with Metroidvania elements, having players travel through multiple levels with lots of hidden treasure to be found in between the nooks and crannies. For your basic combat needs, Shantae comes equipped with her hair. It's fast, powerful, and more often than not will get the job done, but for those looking for more, magic power-ups can be purchased at the shop, increasing her toolkit. Fireballs, spinning pike balls, and shields to name a few, but upgrades such as shampoo to increase your damage and armor to decrease damage taken can also be acquired here to further strengthen yourself up. As long as you aren't skipping over the numerous pots and enemies throughout stages, upgrading Shantae shouldn't be something you'll have to worry about. More importantly though are the dances, usually earned through completing stages for the first time, but occasionally hidden throughout stages are purchasable as well, these dances will transform Shantae into various animals, allowing Shantae to traverse stages in ways her human form just couldn't. 
This includes turning into a monkey for quicker movement and wall jumps, a mermaid for underwater travel, and an elephant to destroy boulders obstructing your way. And yeah, they're all pretty cute. There's a ton of transformations here, and on top of all that magic mentioned earlier, Shantae's arsenal in sheer numbers is quite impressive, but a lot of these transformations won't be seen outside of when required. Most of them are either slow, can't attack reliably, or exist for very specific reasons, and as a result feel kinda gimmicky. Thankfully, selecting transformations is quick. Hell, you can even speed up dances by purchasing the corresponding power-up, so constantly switching in and out of transformations doesn't feel like much of an issue here. Half Genie Hero is broken up into six individual stages, each containing its own obstacles and challenges for you to overcome. Levels aren't connected, but instead selectable on the world map. But that doesn't change the fact that this game will require you to use your newly acquired abilities to backtrack and access areas not previously reachable. And boy, are you going to be backtracking a lot. Each stage varies quite a bit in terms of aesthetic and set pieces, and during your first run through a level, it's genuinely enjoyable to see what Half Genie Hero throws at you. The Mermaid Factory, for example, is a nice mix of standard platforming with vertical climbing sections in the later half, all while surrounded by water which can be explored at later times once the needed transformations are learned. Whereas the desert focuses on powerful winds blowing you back, giant monster chasing sequences, and disappearing block platforming, not unlike something from the classic Mega Man titles. It's simple, straightforward fun, all complemented by the game's tight controls, but it's rare to find Half Genie Hero breaking new grounds. It's a very safe game, and I can only think of a few instances where I felt like I was doing something new for the first time. Boss battles take form as the end of stage challenge, and while none of them may be particularly challenging, I did find myself having fun against each one. Well, besides the giant sandworm and true final boss, unfortunately. I thought those were a bit boring. Bosses can be split up into two categories, those that play around with the arena surrounding them, meaning platforming and stage awareness are just as much of a factor as hitting the boss itself, and those that are just straight duels, testing your dodge and whipping skills. Neither styles feels out of place here, and the mix lends boss fights to feel refreshing rather than repetitive. Honestly, I didn't dislike a single level my first time through. I thought they were all great, but as the game demands you start backtracking, I found myself devaluing these stages a bit. As a concept, even in this game itself, I don't dislike backtracking. Going back to find those extra heart holders and new abilities is part of the fun of a Metroidvania experience, and I think that part is handled pretty well. Exploring with your new abilities to open new paths for progression, though, is kinda lacking. In most cases, you're exploring old areas in search of items to fulfill fetch quests, whether it be for the dynamo itself, or helping out an NPC in their problem. And the only level of progression you'll get is when all those quests are done, and you acquire a new map, allowing access to a new stage. It kinda just feels like padding, to be honest. I would've loved it if those transformations open up alternate pathways, expanding levels to be bigger than they already were. But outside of underwater sections, most exploration will lead you to either the treasure directly, or a small challenge room. You're going to become very familiar with these levels, despite how some of them even change slightly on revisits. But if you aren't clueless on where to go next, which you shouldn't be because the town hub is filled with NPCs giving you clues on where to go, the game also features a warp dance, allowing Shantae to skip over sections of the level if already completed. It's a handy tool for when you don't want to run through the entire stage, but with levels like these, sometimes it's not even required. For all that said about having to constantly backtrack, Half Genie Hero is honestly pretty short. There's no dungeons this time, which I can't help but miss, and the more I think about it, the less I consider Half Genie Hero to be a true Metroidvania. The elements are there, don't get me wrong, but with the way levels are designed, I feel like action and platforming are more focused on this time around. Does that mean Half Genie Hero is a lesser game when compared to the previous entries? Not necessarily. A good platformer is by no means better or worse than a Metroidvania on concept alone, and unless you just aren't a fan of one genre over the other, there's a lot to enjoy here. I do believe, however, that Half Genie Hero would have benefited greatly from an extra stage or two, as your adventure is one that's over before you know it, even if you're going for all those collectibles. It all comes back to Half Genie Hero being a Kickstarter campaign, and when you go over those stretch goals, it all starts to make sense. WayForward was completely honest in regards to how much content was going to be put into this game, and it's crazy to think just how much shorter this game would have been had it not been for all those lovely backers. The development for Half Genie Hero is not over just yet either, as new playable characters will be making their way into the game throughout the coming months. More ways to play, thereby increasing the overall value and experience of Half Genie Hero, though I'm pretty sure non-backers will have to pay for each new character, so let's hope they aren't too expensive. It might not be perfect, but I did enjoy Shantae Half Genie Hero quite a bit beating it in about 5 hours with most collectibles obtained, and making sure to achieve the true ending, all in one sitting. Those looking for some solid action platforming likely won't regret giving Half Genie Hero a shot, and it's hard to deny just how charming and pretty this game looks at the end of the day. As someone who didn't back the Kickstarter, I don't regret spending the $20, but for those hesitant to give Half Genie Hero a try, it's bound to go on sale down the line. That'll about do it for me though, thanks for watching. Until next time.